Welcome back to the OPL. This is a segment where we get to decide what we're going to shove down Pyra's throat. <laughs> that sounds real rough. No, it's that's, not wrong, though. It's technically it's, it's correct. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, so, of course, uh, Devin turned up to work today and said he can't eat chili because of stomach reasons. He wussed out. Well, I didn't he, want to he say was, it. He was out. You didn't want to say it. Ever the like, optimist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Complete turnaround. This is, this is a hostile work environment. I'm just going to lay it out there. <laughs> well, I don't think it's that. I mean, we're not making you eat the chili. That's A hostile work mm. environment would be making you eat the chili, uh, is what I, is it, what I it's think. It's still hostile. Uh, now, we've got some great suggestions from the chat. Uh, I wanted to just run through these, see what we think. Lay them on uh, us. Yeah, hit me. In terms Let's of go. quantities as well, what we should be doing. Oh, oh, okay. oh okay. Because like, because you know, he he. I think he needed to eat three chilies. I think. I believe you know that. Many that many I, I know it was at least two. But I, I think two or three. I think you were equal two to or me, three and I ate three. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um. So the first one, uh, just dry wheat bix. He just needs to smash dry that wheat bix. That is pretty punishing. That is. That's am right. I allowed, am, yeah. I, am I allowed water? It says dry wheat bix. What? We could do the spawn approach. Definition of wet. Yeah. What it's, did you have? It's about as wet as Wait you could get. Jam. Like, jam. That's actually nice. I don't think we should give him nice. No, that's that's what Jake ate as a treat. We can't give Jake's treat to Pyra. That's as a not punishment. a treat. Doesn't Some people like eat treat. like what they call treats. Yep. But it's just not true. Yep. Like, and that is that is that is just <laughs> not true. Wheat mix with jam <laughs> is not a treat. It's just excellent. Nobody I don't know wants if to I eat that. I want to be taking advice from the Sejuani Gelly <laughs> no, picker. That has literally nothing to do with it. Ooh. But I would say three dry wheat mix. Is mm. almost as bad as three chili because nah. you're gonna be you're gonna be coughing up the. No, is this like cinnamon challenge level. Or? It is. Okay. It's, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's, it's there's definitely a period right. after eating that really sucks. Oh, I have to cast after that too. Do yes. no, 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 Three a, si spoon. a spoonful. Yeah, three. Wait, is this is this tablespoons or teaspoons? Tablespoon. Uh, I don't think that spoon. matters. <laughs> <laughs> Ladle. <laughs> <Deep -fold. laughs> so I, by the way, I've had Vegemite before. Oh, um, I used to. So, fun fact: before I did esports, I used to work for a, a software company that was based in Australia, and people would travel to the main office all the time, and they bring back Vegemite every time. So I tried it the first time, and I was like, "This is so strong." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they told That's me, "No, you had to spread it like really thin," and I wasn't capable of spreading it thin enough for me to enjoy it. And you just ate it like it was honey or something. I mean, I put butter on top of it, which is what I was told you're supposed to do. On top of it? That's People double I... butter their Vegemite. Yeah. What? what? Yeah, so they put butter on the toast, Vegemite, and then butter on it again. I've seen people do it. Disgusting human that's beings. Just, that's just trying to like hide the taste of the at, Vegemite, right? At that like, point, you don't, have any, you don't have any toast anymore. It's just mostly butter. Yeah, correct. So what you need to do is you need to just like toast, real hot toast, mm. butter, and a good... I'm not a like scrape. I'm like a good smear of Vegemite on there. So right. how how are we deciding this? Is this is is this we are deciding. We're yeah. deciding. Yeah. yeah. How are you guys? There's deciding no we this? in this. Yeah. 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 Uh, are you taking a vote? Is that what's happening? <laughs> we will potentially. We'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna go yes to the next one. Shiny GG says give him some laxatives. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help his stomach. Yeah, that'd be well, great. Uh, <laughs> these are all crazy. There's no <laughs> harm in that. So that would be three laxatives. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that. That sounds uh, like a good time. Bo Dean says I think he needs to do a shoey. And we spoke about this. We mm. yeah. had the idea of a, a flat white, a flat white chewy, which <laughs> I think is a great idea. Um, yeah, but I reckon that's too nice. Like, unless it was, I mean, we have oh. the best coffee in the world. Why do we want to give it away? That's it's a true. punishment, Milo. And, that's true. Although and Sydney coffee, actually, this is a punishment. Make him drink Sydney coffee. <laughs> oh please! And everyone in this room, except for Bryce, has really clean shoes as well. So it's like that's not a punishment. Excuse as well me. Look at my. Well, I'm gonna put my left. Look at my left shoe. It's a good. Oh. That's Banger. A good, clean My right shoe, shoe, we don't look at. We don't look at that shoe. We don't look I at that I still feel like that's a bit dirty. Uh, no, but the viewers can't see it. You can see it because you're in person. But if you, you didn't just give it away, you just dogged me so hard. <laughs> you, just, you just, what was that? Come on. Come uh, on, man. In X uh, Act 199 says, make him run a kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> is this three Ks? I think they're betting I don't know what a kilometer is. Do you know what a kilometer yeah, is? Make him run a mile. Yeah, Let's three just, miles if you want. Congratulations, it's a mile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'm just going to shut my mouth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, wise, wise idea. He was talking earlier that he does cardio, so I don't think that's... Yeah. Um, uh, Chrono Drop says double the amount of chili he gets when he's allowed to eat chili again. I, this is what I suggested this morning. Yeah. So this should be it. Every day he doesn't eat chili, it's like compound chili. Well, I think... Well, that gets very bad very <laughs> yes, quick. I think... He can. He's allowed to postpone, but it's like you know when you know when you go into the shops and your mates like, oh, can you get me this? And you're like, yeah, like plus a dollar. You get a little tax if you don't come. You know what I mean? 
Like that's that's you're like, a if, shit friend. No, no, you're a like, terrible no, friend. No, but like it's a thing. Like back in no school, one, no one on. knows that. Come on, no one. That is you absolutely know what that is? thing. You're a bank, and you ruined <laughs> this country. <laughs> but like I'm I'm positive, Paul. I'm a nice guy most of the time. But if you piss me off, then maybe I'll charge a little dollar. I'm but, just. But so this is you get to the end. Sure, you can bank your chilies. But there's a little consequence at the end, and you just double it. You double it. Okay, Rusty. You don't have to compound. I I feel like that's pretty extreme. That's pretty extreme. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of chili. All right. Well, Nobi one says play fan games instead of chili. That's too 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 easy. See that that's a list. punishment for everyone else because I'm really bad. That's true. I like. I don't honesty. know if you guys want that. That's true. Here's here's the one I like the most. Now I don't know whether or not we're going to be able to get this in time. Oh. And I don't think he needs to do three. I think one is disgusting enough. Rye Lowe's says, make him eat a Chico roll. Oh, yes. Ooh, a Chico yes. roll. No what? one really knows. Oh, as, as it, have you ever had a Chico roll before? Uh, you said Chico roll, and I don't know what that is. It's a cylindrical, deep fried, <laughs> cabbage stuffed. Collection oh. of meats. Yeah. Collection of assorted Things. Mystery, Mystery meat? foods. Like, no, just food. Like, some of it in there is not meat. Like, some of it is just white stuff. Like, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> parsnips? We don't Potentially. Know. I maybe don't potato? Know. Who it's, knows? I straight up feel gross just saying... The chat is divided as well. People are saying chicken rolls are shithouse. People are saying chicken rolls are amazing. This but you've all had one. Exactly, apart from Bryce, You go to a football who has game? An experience is like usually where all. you'd have them. Like, like at it, sporting events and okay. stuff? Okay, sure. I mean, I've been to plenty. But I've never had a chicken roll, obviously. Can't just have yeah, that like, it's a Barry. disgusting thing. Um, okay, what are we getting him to do? I like dry wheat bix. Yes. Because I feel like it 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 also visually conveys the same thing that chili does, which is like immediate discomfort. Yes, and also we have to think about the point of spicy tips is you have to round out the day mm. and talk about the next day. And That's listening true. after three wheat bix full of dry oh, mouth. We're doing three? Yeah. 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 He's got Ooh. three chilies, he's got he's three wheat bix. Yeah. I want to see how he like he has to speak. Can we not do like a wheat? I don't bix, think I can fit three wheat bix in my mouth. And like and talk about this and have three. No, you're things. gonna eat them all. And then, then and then speak. Yeah. Okay, okay, so Rusty's just suggested that he does a wheat bix and then like a, a chico roll of Vegemite or, and yeah. a chico roll. Well, see, here's yeah, the thing. back to back. It's a marathon. The, the chat seems to be saying that chico rolls are good. I think you guys are crazy. But am I the only one? No, I hate them. As Jake well. hates them. I'm not a fan. Rusty hates them. Yeah, Bryce, I hate them. You'd hate them if you ate them. You they sound them. disgusting. The funny thing I mean, is, out of everyone in this room, you look the most like a Chico roll, <laughs> but you would hate it. You would hate it more than. What any does that one. even mean? <laughs> um, so, I don't know what they look like, and that's still funny. Okay, well, <laughs> here, how about this? We can we could easily get our hands on Wee Picks. Chico roll is going to be a stretch, so we'll see if we can get them by the end of the broadcast. Mm. And if not, then we'll just do the Wee Picks thing. Does that sound fair? Sounds Everyone great. fair? Yep. Yeah. Everyone's I'm happy? happy? I'm on board. Is Chad happy? No one cares. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> Bryce Paul. Let's move on now with the next game. It is Bombers versus AV. Uh, both of these teams doing pretty good yep. in the old OPL. Uh, Rusty talks through, Bombs. Absolutely. Of course, you've got your coach Weston way there behind the boys in the draft. Mimic is your top laner with Balkan in the jungle. Ryoma, the mid laner with FBI and Rogue down in the bottom lane. This team wasn't always rated as a top two team by some people out mm -hmm. there before the season started, but you can't say after the last two weeks yep. that they're not contending for that top mm -hmm. spot for certain. You know, they've had some hiccups, but they are still well and truly a top two team now trying to cement themselves at the top one spot. Yeah, certainly tied for the most points in the league. They've had some very, very good games. Across the board, this roster is stacked with talent. I feel like Balkan is still the biggest wild card that we have seen. Like, yet everybody else we know about, we've, we've only seen two weeks of play from Balkan. We've seen some good, like some okay. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had a bad game by mm -hmm. any means, but like their top jungle uh, duo, the Korean duo in Mimic and Balkan, I feel like can be very scary. They have a scary mid lane. They have a scary bottom lane. Across the board, this team is just pretty fearsome. And uh, another fearsome team who, you know, weren't necessarily the most fearsome when we were coming yes. into this, but it turns out AV, pretty damn good at playing mm -hmm. League of Legends. Bryce? Certainly have showed us some uh, incredibly weird stuff. Coach Kai will be pacing behind them during Champ Select. Chippies, Kiwi in the top lane. Sybil is actually going to be starting today. So, of course, Swaith is the other jungler, and Sybil is going to be the choice. Shock is the man that showed us Mordekaiser, Guncrab, and Aladoric. Rookie bottom lane for the AV lineup have uh, actually put up some decent performances so far, and... But Actually, no. To be Swaith? clear, yeah. To be clear, it is Swaith starting yeah. not Sybil for this game. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go into the big details yeah, why, as to man? why. Uh, but we have <laughs> obviously got Swaith in for a reason. He was our big game player against Mammoth last week as well, and I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to see what he can do again today.
I reckon it's because he kept complaining about it in the in AV episode, life. In AV yeah. life, oh. and, it was, and you watched that and you felt sorry for him. You were like, "Fine, we'll put you in." Uh, he seems very nice. Uh, Shock is who we're following on the Twitter POV. So if you want to uh, check out how Shock plays, then head to our Twitter page at OPL, and you can watch that POV stream. And right now, you can also watch Pyra eat his next Australian food, the delicious Golden Gate. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing it right, but. It does you use really a knife delicious. and fork, mate. No, I'm not doing that. I'm definitely not doing a knife and fork. I already got burned once on that. But, um, Spawn, why don't you talk us through this matchup while I devour this delicious ice cream treat? All right. First things first, Golden Gate Time is the best ice cream in the world, and I'm incredibly jealous right now. Uh, however, no, nah, it's fine. Uh, Bombers versus Avant Game. We both can't eat at the same time. You and Rusty already proved that that is a very flawed thing no, to do. No, uh, it's mine. <laughs> it's mine. Get out of here. Get out of here, Nick. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Bombers versus no, Avant Gaming. Uh, very excited about ah. this matchup, actually, because uh, I think that Bombers are kind of the most standard of the top teams. They play pretty methodical, pretty, sl uh, not slow, but, you know, they, they tech, uh, tick the checkboxes, whereas Chiefs, very quick. And then Avant are kind of the wild card of the top three. And they've got the funny drafts. They've got everything kind of happening behind the scenes with Rusty, with Kai. They've got the youngest, most, I guess, uh, dynamic lineup as well out of the top three teams. And I think that Bombers will either perform very well against that style or will get absolutely crushed by it, as Water did. So very excited to see what kind of game happens here today, Pyro. So you don't expect any middle ground. It's going to be one or the yep. other for sure. Now, Bombers come into this and they have... Despite dropping a game to the Chiefs, which I think was a fairly close, like, kind of upset affair, they've looked every bit the part of title contenders yep. that we expected them coming into this one. But Avant have been the surprise sleeper runaway hits. And they're running with Swathe here, who is the more aggressive jungler. And he, of course, elicits the Karthus ban. What do you expect to see out of him, particularly this game, as the uh, Urgot is the obvious choice here for Mimic? Big Evelyn player. Uh, don't know whether he'll necessarily go towards it. Uh, don't really know all that much else about his champ pool in particular. I think it's pretty standard after that. Uh, I would say that Swaith is, in my opinion, you know, a very good jungler, actually. I think that he's uh, being left out of the OPL and having to go back to Chiefs Academy last OCS was a big... Wait, no. It showed that the scene wasn't willing to take risks on exciting new players. And I think that Swaith has been an exciting new player. I think that he's actually probably, if I was going to be on Avant, he would be my preferred jungler over Sybil. I think he has way more upside than Sybil. Uh, and he can certainly pop off in game. So, you know, if he's on something like the Evelyn, something like the Camilla, I expect him to be very good. Do you think that high reward comes with a lot of uh, risk as well, though? No, nope, not at all. Uh, he's a pretty consistent jungler at worst and a very, very good jungler at best. He's, okay. a, he's a standout player. In fact, Sybil's actually the player to me that has the peaks and troughs and very, very rarely just has like an okay game. He's either an electric player or a little bit of an insult. So, singing the praises here this way. We'll see if it lives up to those expectations, taking a look at the Bombers' competition so far. They've definitely got a lot of firepower. You've got the Kai'Sa locked in for FBI, Urgot top for Mimic, mm -hmm. and then, of course, there's also the Lissandra, but it's going to be matched up against the Syndra of Shock. And this is a little bit strange, right? Because, I mean, even though we've seen all three carries locked in here, you don't re really necessarily know where they're going, whether, you know, Lissandra is top and Urgot is mid lane. You don't know how they're going to supplement the rest of this. If they go, for example, Zac jungle right now, Shock's pick of uh, Syndra is kind of bad. Very immobile mid laner there that can be picked on. In fact, we saw that with Order versus Gravitas last week, the exact same matchup run, and uh, unfortunately for Harry, it didn't look all that promising. So I think that, especially on red side, this is generally where you take support and try and pinch Bomber's support player in Rogue's champion pool and allow Shock to see the jungler before he has to take his counter pick and saying that that's not what happened. Uh, they just take all three carries instead for both teams. And now we can see junglers getting pinched very heavily. There are a lot of jungle bans already. So Kindred Camille off the board and then looking to the opposite side is Kha'Zix Xin Zhao. And neither team has picked it up. Balkan, of course, has been the EVE player, but Swaith will take it as well. Yep. Should be uh, the expected one. And Absolutely uh, now what do, you, what do you expect Balkan to go towards? I mean, there are still junglers available. Things like Lee Sin are still up. Uh, you know, we talk about all the tanks. Sejuani, Zach still both available. Gragas is still up and available. So this is the thing about pinching jungle at the moment. You need to, like, really throw seven bands at the roll to have any meaningful impact, in my opinion. Uh, you know, even things like Rengar potentially could be played into something like Evelyn because you can be aggressive into the E. 
Uh, that's going to be one of Rogue's signature picks in the Thresh. Will help out ganking potential as well. And they've got good gank setup now in three lanes. So Volkan can really play whatever he wants. Yeah, and there's the Olaf coming in again. So we've actually seen quite a lot of it today. Three for three. Mm -hmm. uh, it's put in an appearance in the jungle. That definitely should be Balkan's pick instead of the Lee Sin. Got two victories as well so yeah. far, I believe, the yeah. Olaf. So 100%. might be a good luck charm on patch 9.2. Well, we'll find out for sure. Avant's last pick will be their support for Aladoric. Wouldn't this be too surprised so to see this Braum weird. coming in. I feel like a couple of roles now, they've just, like, counterpicked themselves. Like, Shock's going to have a hard time, I feel, against Olaf, uh, Lissandra in the mid lane. And nowadays, Thresh play it, like, so in the past, Braum used to beat Thresh. That was, like, the considered rule. Nowadays, Thresh players like playing Thresh into Brawl. It's actually a prefer preferred matchup for a lot of Thresh players. And I think that FBI and Rogue are going to be able to farm this lane out fairly successfully. Um, so I think that the top side of the map have a lot of pressure on them, especially Swaith and Chippies, to be able to get Avant a good early game. Because, you know, as this game progresses, Syndra plus Urgot will... Assa uh, sorry, Lissandra plus Urgot will assassinate someone, and then FBI could potentially run over these team fights. So I like what Bombers have put together. You know, still very good front to back comp picked up here for Avant Gaming, but I feel like they have to be able to play this early game very cleanly. Yeah, it does seem like they haven't necessarily picked for the early game specifically, but rather assuming that they can survive it. I mean, Avant are no slashes. They've gone oh, they're very one good so far. They have impressed beyond expectations. Whereas Bombers have kind of been at that expectation, but that's a good thing when your expectation is title contender. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, coming into this uh, season, say what you want, uh, Shock and Chippy showed now that they're two very good solo laners. And I think that you can put to bed that Chippy's has gone through a slouch and not recovered. Certainly has recovered now. Shock has uh, continued to prove that he is one of the better up and coming mid laners in a very stacked mid lane region like the Oceanic Pro League. And I think that this team, you know, just has that good mix of some veterans and some good, young, exciting talent. And very excited to see what Avant can do against a title contender like Bombers because we've seen today that, you know, Mammoth have lost now to uh, Direwolves as well. So you can potentially see that that uh, win becomes a little bit less impactful. But a win against the Bombers would certainly show that this Avant lineup is a title contender. We've been talking a little bit about how Avant might be just overperforming beyond you know what they were but that that, that phrase almost it almost kind of sounds like they don't really have a whole lot going for them and i think they definitely have a lot deliberately now they've gone for the brush bait but it's going to be revealed very early as bombers didn't actually go too close to it so early game shenanigans actually getting denied certainly is both teams go for a little bit of early game shenanigans they're not going to be able to grab that ward um so not going to be able to pick it up all right, well, as uh, the little game of cat and mouse unfolds here, we're going to welcome to the desk for our interview Coach Kai of Avant Gaming. Welcome. Hi, thanks. Yeah, so taking a look at uh, the comp that was drafted against you here from Bombers, was you know this kind of layout the, the sort of thing that you expected going up against Bombers? Yes, um, I think all these champions suit them. They're very known to play all of, the, uh, all of these types of picks and should be a really good game. I think both teams are on very strong comps for themselves. So five jungle bands... Yes. And they don't touch the Evelyn. Do you think that they were hoping that you were going to last pick a jungle here and they would get the Evelyn? Or do you think a bit of disrespect towards uh, Swade's second best pick? I think we're two of the teams that really prioritize Evelyn. And I think they banned the us not taking it and taking the priority support pick. But we decided to take the Evelyn because we trust Aladoric to be able to play this matchup extremely well. All right, cool. Now talk me through the start of your season because obviously Rusty hasn't coached before, but you know has a lot of experience. You've coached a couple of challenger scenes and a couple of international teams, uh, and you have a young lineup. How are you guys working on keeping the guys you know continually focused? Because it's such a great start of the season, you would hate to see you know focus slip, and you know one bad week at the moment could undo a lot of that hard work being put into this season. Uh, I don't think one bad week would actually have a huge issue on the team. The mental is really good. Chippies has stepped up as a massive leader, and so is Shaw, so is Sybil. Just, they've been fantastic. And uh, the rookies coming in have just been constantly focusing on getting better, playing to their win conditions, and just learning. And I don't think it really would affect us. Okay, cool. And uh, obviously, you know, someone who spells burn in the bottom lane, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I want to ask you about how this double jungle is going, because we've seen it done unsuccessfully in the OPL before, but it looks to be working so far. Uh, what, what you, like, without going into the detail of who plays when, but how are the junglers working with each other, and are you happy with the success of the six-man roster so far? Yeah, it's been fantastic. I think it makes us really hard to draft and plan against. They help each other just constantly. Their pathing is much better, and um, they just keep looking 
at each other's games. They have different strengths, and both of them have just been skyrocketed from that. All Seems right. to have been working uh, pretty well so far. Hopefully, that'll keep being the case. Thank you so much for joining us, Kai. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. You as well. Best of luck in this game. So, yeah, you, you talked about it, Spawn, how uh, Summer's burnt in the bot from Aladoric and Guncrab, but they have managed to still go toe-to-toe -to -toe here. They're not falling super far behind in any of the farm department. And it does feel like Avant, it's going to be on them to just survive that laning phase for when they will be a little stronger, maybe in the mid-game. Nice hook there from Rogue. Yeah, Rogue's got his eye in right now. You can see that he's pretty confident with those hooks landing. And this is what I was saying is uh, the old trade pattern of Thresh used to be walk up, flay, and then be able to follow up with the hook. Now in this matchup, if you hook, Braum has to put up the shield immediately as actually top lane. There we go. Shippies is forced to flash as well. So the pressure continues on two fronts. Balkan joining Mimic up there. It was a flash for flash. Yeah, it looks like it was a flash flip coming out of Chippies. I was actually talking. Oh, they're going for the turret dive oh, here, Oh, round number two here. Chippies nowhere really to run right now. And he's going to get chunked out. He does get a decimating smash, and that's a lot Got of him. damage. Mimic taking another tower shot. He manages to stay alive for now, and Swaith coming in to try and clean him up. It looked like it was a one-for-one one trade, though, under tower. And this could backfire on Bombers as Swaith is still looking for oh. an extra hit. Lands the charm, gets the kill. Avant come out ahead. Yeah, really nicely played from Swaith there. Burnt the flash. I thought that Mimic was going to be able to get away. He lived with just the end of the shield there, Mimic. However, Swaith able to pick up the two-for-one trade. Chippies teleports back, gets a lot of that wave. And Swaith now with the tempo advantage over Balkan as well. That's the best-case scenario for Avant. So on a completely different note, yep. Golden Gate Time is really good. Yeah, really good ice cream. Actually, funny story about Golden Gate Time. I mean, not all that funny. I hate when I, people do that, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, story about Golden Gate Times. Uh, I went to Worlds in 2015, uh, and I made a reference to Golden Gate Times, and no one understood what they were, because uh, I didn't know that they were an Australian thing at that point. And then Sky and threw me with a Golden Gate Time, and it was my display picture for like a year. I actually remember that. And like I was trying to remember up until you said it, where I remembered it from, yep. and then you mentioned Sky and it clicked, and I'm like, ah, yes, that thing that he drew you with that I didn't know what it was. Yeah, but they're delicious. For those they're, that don't know really, what it's like Golden Gate Times are, yeah, stuff. it's like graham cracker. Yep, just all good. I thought it was like like almonds or peanuts or something. Nah, no, 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 no. okay, this is way better. Peanut with sweet stuff, not good. Peanuts yeah. alone, great. Sweet stuff alone, top tier. Peanut and sweet stuff, bottom tier. Right, it's good. It's a bit messy, but it's good. Well, no, normal people don't spill it over a casting desk when they I eat I mean, one. I was trying to, like, eat it in between sentences, which is also what normal people don't do. Yeah. It's difficult. And Nick Weiss stole a bit of it. Borrowed. I'm sure he'll do I don't back. want it back. <laughs> Ooh, level 6 here. Royalman shot going through. That's going to be the frozen tomb, which means it forces out the cleanse. Yeah, and that's so strange that shock cleanse there because you can see no jungler anywhere near mid lane and they had bottom lane fully scouted out with wards and shock was pretty close to bottom lane so maybe he's respecting Ryoma a little bit or, or rather you know fearing him uh, I mean Ryoma does have a, a, a pretty fearsome reputation in the OPL yeah it certainly does bottom lane now here we go here comes Balkan once again and Aladoric and Guncrab find themselves in a good old 2v3 Guncrab left for dead and Aladoric is cut off from getting back to his own tower, so this is going to be two kills picked up here. It's just a matter of when and how. Let me ask you a question, or axe rather, as the double kill comes through for FBI. Yeah, it certainly does, and who would you rather have two kills at this point of the game than FBI in that bottom lane? Very nicely played. You can see that they just know how to play around the Thresh. Volkan didn't take the Lantern. They gave the kill over to FBI. Thresh repositions him right next to the support to be able to continue the chase. Cut off any form of retreat there. Very nicely played from the bottom, uh, Bomber's bottom lane. However, in saying that, it is right now two versus uh, two to three kills. Swaith having a little bit more trouble with the red buff than you would expect. Yeah, a little bit of misfiring there. Uh, he's still going to be able to get it sooner or later, but you know, those are those little mistakes that sometimes cost you big down the line. Gets the smite early because he needed the health, and he will get out with it. Uh, Evelyn is one of those champions. I, I mentioned, I heard you guys mentioning last week that it's, it's the kind of champion that if you can get something done by level six, you're in good shape. Sway's got one kill. Mm -hmm. How much more does he need before he gets into, you know, quote unquote good territory? Oh no, that's a that's a great start for him. Uh, it's going to push him even earlier towards his jungle item. It gives you that little bit more experience. So on this clear, he should be able to hit level six and stay on the map. So everything he wanted out of his early game, he's now got. It's about how he transitions that level six and ultimate spike with runic echoes onto the rest of the map. Because now FBI is ahead, you probably want to be able to attack that bottom lane a little bit more. You know, you also have the fact that there's no cleanse on mid lane. So you have to be worried for shock and they're actually going for a gank here. Yeah. 
Right on time, forced to flash away, so now no summoners left for Shock at all. And they didn't even have to burn a flash there to be able to get it, you know, no Ragnarok, anything like that. It was just Predator boot zoom into the mid lane from what I could see. Uh, so Shock needs to play this lane a little bit more carefully, Pyra. Yeah, he's got to play with quite a lot of respect. I mean, when you're playing a Syndra into a champion that can lock you down, into a very active ganker like Falcon, uh, you've definitely got to be very careful, and Shock knows this. I think all of Avant really know this, but... You know, we've seen, we've definitely seen them surprise. The question is, can they do that against the likes of Bombers? Because this should be the toughest test that they've faced so far. Yeah, well, I mean, people would have said that about Mammoth, and people certainly had very high opinions of order going into their game compared to Avan as well, and they made short work of both of those teams, so I think that they've passed the test they need to so far. Obviously, this being the latest one, but I don't think just because you fail against Bombers, it means that the other two victories weren't impressive. Um, Not at all, but it's if, if, you, if you beat Bombers, then all of a sudden that, that title contender talk starts going your way. Yeah, potentially. I mean, it's still only week three. This is the thing that always makes me very nervous to start calling people with title contenders. We've just seen teams like last year's Chiefs, you know, do incredibly well during the regular season. And now we're seeing Avant do really well. Um, and I, I wonder, you know, whether it's a little bit more difficult now with how the ecosystem is set up to be able to call them from season one, how the... Uh, from week one, how the season's going to go. I think that's fair. This is the first early Infernal Drake we've had, so this is why we see players a little bit keen to try and stop it from happening early on. That could start to turn the tides a little bit, even if the scaling AD and AP don't matter as much in the early stages. Yeah, and I mean, first Dragon got buffed during the off-season, which, you know, has often been overlooked, I think, you know. In light of Dragon's the other changes, yeah. Two, two and three are now worse, but Dragon one is significantly better. Um, so getting an early, you know, first Infernal Dragon does bode very well, especially when you've got things like Evelyn Jungle and Syndra mid lane. That additional little bit of burst will be able to pick up that kill for you. So I can understand why they want to prioritize it. In saying that, very good vision control from the Bombers to be able to shut that one down. And you can see that they think that the focus is going to be around this bottom lane, because top lane, apart from one pink ward from Mimic, is in complete darkness. And bottom side of the map from both teams trying to be contested. There's a lot to focus on down there. It has been fairly even across the lanes, though, and you even look at it in terms of where the gold's been going. The big exception, of course, being FBI, because he's got two kills early on. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that, you know, that was against the tide of play as well. AV said that they were very confident in this bottom lane matchup. That's why they were happy to take Swade's pick a little bit earlier. Uh, didn't work out that way. You can see Bolkan now off the back of a rotation, uh, sorry, base off his bottom lane, and the Moby Boots coming out from Rogue, feeling very confident to get into the river early and sweep out all this vision. Uh, very nicely played, and now potentially they can take a look at the flashless mid laner. This is something I've seen Bombers do quite a lot over the course of this game already. Just bush baiting with a couple of players after they've cleared out Vision. Hoping that Avant walk in to face check and they might just get their wish. Swaith coming through, but he does put down the ward first. Smart moves here. It's going to force Bombers to back away. FBI coming through. Not enough damage to really go through on that one. In early game, you don't really want to go in with the Killer Instinct on level 7. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's one of the times where you're just fishing, right? Where, you know, there's nothing else to do in the afternoon, so you just bait up a line and throw it into the river. And if you catch something, well, that's well and good. But if you haven't, you already got dinner prepared at home anyway. And you can see that the Bombers just had a lot of free time. Their bottom lane was already pushed in. They knew that Gunkrab was going to catch that one at turret. So what do we use our free time for? A lot of vision control around the river. You know, start to exert some of that pressure. It was one of those plays that there was nothing really else on the map. So if we get it, it will work out for us. That's fantastic. But we don't lose anything from going for this. And you see Avant now with their free time. They know that Volkan has to go back into his jungle, has to take out a couple of camps like that red buff. Now encroach back into that river, take over all of the control. And uh, this is a very disciplined play uh, from both teams, you know. Obviously, Bombers respecting Avant's start to the season very much so far. Yeah, I think you kind of have to do that. You look at the likes of Bombers, they have lived up to the expectations that were set on them that they were going to be uh, one of the, the best teams early on. And even in best of one scenario, we've seen that happen. Swayth comes through. Somehow snuck into that brush, Swayth. I don't think he was caught out either in Vision. They know exactly where Volcan is. They go in. Now they're going to make that play, but instantly Rogue is able to drag FBI back, but he loses his own life. FBI will make it out. Volcan's here, but it's a 2v3 situation. Bombers do not want this, but kudos to Avant for finding a blind spot. And that's such an important tag that came out there. You saw that the Braum Thor 
tags up Volkan. He would have had to burn his ultimate so early to get in. They don't want to go for it because they know that this dragon is going to be the point of contention. But they can't contest. Ryoma mid lane, no teleport, no mana. This is going to be the first meaningful objective unless Volkan can steal. Well, Volkan comes in pretty early right now, so they're going to have to force the fight onto him. And they turn attention. He hops back with the flash over the wall, but still eats it. Guncrab is able to get that kill, and they pick up the dragon. They might lose their lives. But Shock is here as well. Ryoma does burn that teleport. Guncrab dashing away, and Avant get out with everything. Beautifully played, and now Ryoma might get stand off. Oh, that's the charm. Another root in, Swaith walking away, and there's the ball down. It's just enough damage. No, Ryoma's going to live, but everything's going Avant's way. Yeah, it certainly is. However, Hook might be on here. They pull into Shock, but immediately he gets the cleanse back. Low cooldown on that summoner spell. Scout of the week, landing on two, but no follow-up damage. Avant gaming have managed to pull this game gold-wise, dead even, and they pick up a dragon besides. And this is what I mean, that the individual skill level of the Avant players is right there with the top three teams. You see, that's all mechanics, you know, landing skill shots, being able to perform on the individual level, clutch cleanse coming out of shock at the perfect time, creates enough distance that Rogue can't follow that, go underneath turret for the flay, and uh, that gives them a big objective. I mean, even gold, but a fire drake on a Lucian, on an Evelyn, on the Syndra in the mid lane. This is a brawling team comp. And even Pablo in the top lane, you know, equal level, equal farm, doing a great job into Mimic. You certainly can't take anything away from the way Avant have been playing overall. And now you start to see why they prioritize the Evelyn, uh, even with all the jungle bans taken away. It's just working out well for them this game. In a region like Oceania, I think that comfort should be prioritized above all. You know, we've seen it in the past with things like Shock's Urgot that has just been so powerful. And I think that, you know, with a pick like Evelyn, if you've got that many games on it, as Swaith has, that you're able to, you know, continue to play at the highest level, why would you not take it into a team unfamiliar? I think Avant definitely lived by that strategy. We saw uh, last week when Chippies took his famous Olaf mm -hmm. uh, in the top side. And, you know, it, it seems like Avant are perfectly comfortable in their own picks a lot of the times. And they also have some surprises too. I mean, remember, this is the team that went for the Mordekaiser mid and had everybody scratching their heads, but they made it work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every single game that they've won, you would say there has been something slightly cheesy about it, which is a good thing. Rusty himself is a big cheeser, plays AP Lucian in solo queue. Uh, so I think that, you know, this is a team that, as you said, has very uh, good understanding of where their cha champion pool lies, what they do, what conditions you need to meet to be able to play them. Yeah. Uh, but right now, Bombers, kind of sick of this landing phase, think they want to open up the game. All right, well, there's going to be some action down on the bot, though. Gun Crab getting very low, but he does get in and get some damage on as a couple of teleports come flying through. That's the shutdown. Ryoma does grab Swaith, and all of a sudden, things start turning around here. Chippies. He was the one on the back line. The Scion should be on the front. That's another double killed FBI. Yeah, and why that play goes disastrously wrong bottom lane, you know, three for one in favor of the Bombers. They're also going to be able to take two turrets top lane, maybe even three here, to be honest. Yeah, and right now, Avant's remaining players kind of running around like headless chickens down here in the bottom side, not finding anything. So it's going to be Mimic, Balkan, and this Rift Herald to start knocking on the front door of the base gates. They might be able to get it here. I mean, this is going to be the first turret broken, and three turrets broken at that. Shelly not going to be able to get a charge onto the inhibitor. However, that is such a big gold swing. 2,000 gold now Ooh. in the lead. <laughs> and Balkan even has time to do a little bit of taunting on the back of it. So Bombers have managed to completely turn around what happened a little earlier on in this game and go right back into the gold lead. They've lost out on that one dragon, but they don't seem phased by it. Aladoric trying to chase onto Balkan. He does land a Winter's Bite, looking for more. Ignite, pop by Mimic. You can see the indecision now creeping into the young players. That's, you know, none of the leaders there. Are we going to go into Balkan? Meanwhile, Shock has been pretty good at landing some of those Scout of the Weeks, but Dead. unfortunately just doesn't have the damage. Ryoma completely outchunks him. Certainly does. 2-0 on one Ryoma. With those Merc trades, not going to be CC'd for long enough. Turns it around. Yeah, you can see the look on Shock's face after that. That's the face of oopsie. Absolutely, and you know the game's starting to really slip away from the lineup now. FBI 4-0 on 1, 700 gold shutdown will take another turret for himself as well. Down in CS on a rare occasion, however, up in every other metric in this game. He's farming champions at this point, Spawn. FBI's having a banner game, uh, and he's going to be very accelerated due to the fact that, he, that the last champion, the last ADC in general that you want 
to get fed, except for maybe a vein, is going to be the Kaiser. Yeah, and I mean, in the situation where it's FBI, there is no champion he would rather be on, right? He's prioritized Kaiser all se season long above anything else to be played. Has a couple of mage games on the victor, but against the top three team, goes straight back to that comfort at 80 carry. He's only a 2,000 gold lead, however. I do have to mention that. Four turrets to zero as well. Means that if Avant somehow win a team fight, it's potentially around this next dragon. They're going to be able to open up the map. In saying that, if Bombers win the team fight, probably looking towards, you know, breaking mid, really opening up this map and giving themselves control around that uh, Baron area. So game really on a nice point right now, and uh, Bombers are just ahead. Well, we've seen from both squads this game that skirmishes can go either way. It really does all come down to the positioning, but the X Factor here really is FBI with those four kills now completed against his Rage Blade at 18 and a half minutes on two items. Uh, Mimic does get caught out, but he's able to lunge away. The rest of Avant, they're grouping down the mid lane. Five strong. And I wonder how Chippies is going to play this frontline role now. He's got himself an Iceborne Gauntlet, so he can't be ignored by FBI in saying that he's still very tanky with the rain jacket as well. So he should be able to do a great job of frontlining. Has himself that 20% cooldown reduction. This could have been a fight they looked for, however. Discipline play from Avant Gaming. Just going to continue to seed pressure around the map. Pick themselves up farm where they can. Try to keep those lanes pushed on the side as well. Not giving Bombers a lot of openings to force pressure plays. Especially considering even though it's it's a, it's a, a ways from being anywhere near comfortable for either team. You know, Baron will spawn in 30 seconds. That's another objective that people have to start worrying about. Good knockback. Ryoma tried to go in out of shock, but unfortunately, that also means that Avant lose their tower. Yeah, and I mean, they knew they were going to lose that objective. Instead, they prepped their side waves to start pushing back in. So they knew the bombers couldn't stick around for any more time. You could also see that Shock was expecting the turret dive to come in this time. Had the ball placed on the ground, positioned himself between him and the ball. So it would always stun Ryoma on his entrance in. And see now whether they can actually pick up the flip side turret. A little bit of tempo. Balkan's about to face it. Check an eight. Looks like Swaith doesn't want to get face checked. Backs away. Rest of Avant coming in here though. Plays around the Baron, he gets the allure off, but that's instantly going to mean the Ooh. Ragnarok is popped and there's a fight. Ryoma jumps into everybody, gets a little bit of chunk damage, but it's not nearly enough and a face full of calling is just enough to shut him down. Gold in the pocket of Gun Crab. Really nice team fight there coming in. Ryoma and FBI had one idea, whilst Volkan had the opposite. He was running away, no frontline available. Chippies now needs to be careful, however. Sometimes you get punished if you're not on the same page. Good flash away from Chippies as Rogue went for the flash flay and then did not predict the hook correctly. Swaith going up towards the top here. Just going to be backing away, though. Oh, he might kill Balkan here. Wait Balkan a second. Balkan checks in. Here we go. Is he going to stop his back? Yes, he is. Waiting to go a little bit lower. And here we go. Gets the allure in. Let the Toad do a little extra damage as well. And that is going to be it. The last caress. And what a great play from Swaith. You know, Able to use just a little bit of positioning on the map. Knows that if anyone face checks him, he still has ultimate, still has flash. Everything available he needs, still has a stopwatch as well. So, so much outplay potential. You know, why not put yourself in a position when you're recalling to make a play around your vision? Now 3-1-2. and two. Such a promising game for the young jungler. Excited to continue to track this player throughout the OPL season because I really do think that he is one of these young, you know, he's not a rookie, he's a second year player, but one of those players to watch continue to evolve because jungle has always been a lackluster position in the OPL. That's why it's so exciting when we get jungle imports coming in. However, Sway's showing that, you know, homegrown talent still looking very promising. True. And it's not the only talent that they've got on the team. I think it's hard for teams to necessarily prepare for a Vaughn's jungle situation because they don't necessarily know who they're playing against. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, We've already had the conversation about, you know, Swaith versus Sybil, and Sybil's, like, just been a journeyman. He plays a lot of champions, has very good tank champion pool, as well as, you know, the early game elites you have to worry about. Swaith a little bit more versatile with things like the Karthus, like the Evelyn going to be coming out as well. So, you know, both of them have strengths, and I think that Swaith really showing that not suffering from the onstage nerves. He even goes a Spellbinder. This is just a man feeling it right now on Summoner's Rift Fire. Yeah, well, he's certainly looking like the powerhouse for Avant's squad right now. Question is, what will Bombers do to try and stop it? Because at the moment, they don't seem to have an answer. In saying that, FBI is still deathless. 
4 0 on 1, 219 CS has caught back up in that regard, has himself a QSS now. That's the other question. Does does FBI care? Yeah. Very good question. I mean, against Order, you know, hate going back to that game, but uh, FBI pretty much on the back of a great engage from Rogue, solo carried the game. I think he finished with like 11 0 as a scoreline, something around there. No, he popped up. Uh, carried Origin as well when New South Wales were able to take down Victoria. Uh, he's just had a couple of real good months of League of Legends after what he would have categorized as a disappointing year last year, right? And that's very ironic to say, given the fact that a lot of people last year would have considered him, you know, one of the best, if not the best AD carry in the league. So certainly showing that he still has room to grow and is an exciting prospect. That's sometimes the mindset that you need to, to keep the growth going. You can't afford to get complacent. That's the mindset that champions adopt. There's always somewhere to go. and. It can be negative sometimes. It can backfire if you are a perfectionist to the point where you can never do enough for yourself. But there's always a balance to be struck there. Absolutely. And I think, you know, looking at the map, the map state right now, very good job from the Bombers to send Ryan with top lane. He can push the furthest with the most safety. Is easier to catch Urgot out than Alessandra. You can see now posturing very aggressively over this next dragon. You would expect it to be a good dragon. Great ward over the wall. So Rogue can go fishing. It's actually not. It's only an air drake. So a lot of priority here. Speaking they might actually go onto him. Oh, Ryoma's going to get caught. Guncrab dashing his way in. Redemption will land just before Ryoma can get it. But he does get the lantern out to safety. Ooh. And here comes the pain train. Scion going in, leaving the station. And now he's backing away. The box is down to cover the escape. But will they be able to escape? It's Balkan walking through the danger and a full channel culling. Guncrab missing on half of it, though, as the rest of Bombers had already backed away. Big minion wave coming through. But Avant walk away, kill us. Yeah, and now they're just going to go back to that Baron position and start posturing around it. Big question mark, however, is do they have enough mana on their carry in shock to be able to start it up? They say no, they don't. They're just going to use this play to secure their jungle for themselves. Bombers now have to face check some vision. But that was a very promising team fight. Great re-engage actually coming out from Chippies to be able to, you know, burn the key summoner spells. FBI's flash now no longer available. That QSS down you know, for another half duration. Certainly areas for them to get picks. And they can just keep forcing the pressure around the Baron side as well. There is a lot of vision here secured by Bombers, but Avant could turn this around when it's isolated. Rayoma, definitely not going to make the same mistake twice. He claws over the wall pretty easily. And that, what I meant, you know, it looked like it was a fire drake. It looked like Avant were going to have to face check at the way Bombers were setting up. However, for just an air, why nah. would you not attack the one? You know, why would you not commit everything onto Rayoma and try and burn some key summoner spells? Weren't able to get anything out of him, but as I mentioned, got the key one out of FBI. And now Mimic shows what they should have just done initially, you know, with a little bit of vision control. Urgot can solo this dragon, go back bottom lane like nothing happened, and now they get the fire spawn. Yeah, that'll be on the next one for sure. Of course, a little bit of time on the board before that happens. Avant would love to pick up a second Infernal Dragon. So for the meantime, the focus is going to be around still trying to force this fight on the Baron. And, and Avant, I feel like if they can get in a position where Swathe either grabs himself a flank or just blows somebody up, then they're just going to be happy to take the ensuing fight. It's just, I don't know if they want this straight up front to back 5v5. Yeah, potentially not at this point. However, the one thing I'll point out is that, actually, here we go. Oh, and knocked back. It's Rayoma. There's going to be the Glacial Fisher knocking up Elidoric, tanking everything, and he gets chewed up and spit out by Mimic, who's still on the chase. The rest of Avant backing away, but they are minus one support and a whole lot of summoner spells besides. Oh, nice misses dodge. there. Still pushing for this one, though. What looked like it might be a tower on the outer for Avant is turning into an inner for Bombers. This might be the time to force the Baron play. Swaith looking for a flank here. Oh, Khan puts down a pink ward. Hook is on again. That's another one. It's on to Chippies, though. How long can he last? Not very long at all is the answer. But Ryoma gets blown up by Shock. Meanwhile, Chippies pops his stopwatch. Guncrab dashing back and forth, letting the tower do the work. There's a shutdown, though. Chippies gets taken out of this one, and it's FBI picking up kill number six. And now FBI potentially by himself. However, it looks like they did spot out Swaith. Now he's on wards. Rogue with that Moby boots. Going to be able to catch up to him. He's going to be flayed. Does go untargetable. Uses the last crest just to dodge the hook. That is so well played from Swaith, but still two turrets go down in favor of the Bombers. They were falling down a thousand gold. Still now swing it back fight. into their favor. I mean, two turrets. Probably yeah. going to swing it further in your favor than, you know, the even kills. This is why you see Avant trying to make a mad dash to finish off the tower mid, try and get something back. Maybe not. Well, more importantly than, you know, the mad dash of evening up the gold, 
It's just this turret is denying so much vision from Avant. They can never go towards Baron because they can't ward all the entrances for it. You want to be able to drop a ward there, maintain mid lane priority, take a check in with the gold. Really is FBI carrying the lion's share of the advantage. Mimic with a small one. It's actually Aladoric in the support, support position, keeping these guys in it. So one of those gold leads that actually might be even bigger than you would think because Aladoric's item is not going to be the most useful in this game, Pyra. No, I think that's that's a good point here. So despite the fact that the total gold is bang on even, it's the distribution, it's where it's at right now that's making all the difference. And FBI on six kills, he's got you know, a QSS plus three item builds. On top of the Ginsu's and the Storm Razor, he also has that Hurricane. So he's going to be a wave clear machine in his own right. Mm -hmm. At this point, Bombers have a pretty big cannon. They just need to position it in the right spot. And FBI is very good at positioning in the right spot. Six, zero, and two so far. Has yet to fall down. Would have been a little bit embarrassed about the performance versus Ray, someone that he holds as a rival and, you know, did fall down to. Now they're looking at Rogue. Let's see if they find him. That is the hook into the box. And everybody gets knocked up to that Glacial Fissure. Aladoric still taking the line. Swaith has actually managed to stay alive for a little while longer. Looking for Balkan, not finding an FBI. Might be isolated Gun from crab. the team. Gunkrab is going to be able to grab him. That's a big shutdown for the Lucian. And all of a sudden, tables are turning. It's still a two for two. But look who's down on either side. And what a play out of Gunkrab. Throwback performance to when he was on Tectonic and took down Order the first time, securing the first victory in so long for Tectonic. This time around, finds his man again, gets the thousand gold shutdown. And now, Avant once again in position where they look like they have control over these team fights. It starts off with such a crafty flank. You know, Swaith is able to walk past the team and Bots rogue on this ward, and they're like, okay, this is one of the primary forms of engagers. If we can chunk him out, we can make this great. Swaith goes in, able to get a great chunk. Hook is on, but they use the stopwatch as opposed to the ultimate. And then Swaith will reposition with his ultimate afterwards. Note the fact that FBI goes very deep here trying to get shock. Gunkrab just launches at him, gets the shutdown, and with the two carries and the big beefy frontline is still available. There is no way Mimic and Ryama can continue that fight. Yeah, and they, they forced Balkan off of that one too with how low he got chunked. Swaith made a huge difference. Sacrifice play as well at the end of it, but it gives Guncrab enough of a gold edge to start getting back into this one. Now he completes his Mercurials. He's got a BF sword as well, and his best friend Swaith is right there. So Avana right back into this game for sure. Not that they were out of it, it's just that it was looking like FBI might be able to carry the day, and we've shown he can bleed. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, you know, getting that 1,000 gold shutdown onto one of your carries that was falling a little bit behind. You know, we said it was 2,000 gold, now it's only 1,000. He died with QSS up, too. Yeah. More importantly, they've got two of uh, the Energizer items. Oh, the, um, a blue, uh, not Oblivion Orb. Spellbinder. Spell yeah, spell they've got two Spellbinders, and they're such good artificial power as it looks like right now, they're just going to be able to grab themselves a fire drake. Right? Fight really no answer hit. from Avant. They kind of got indecisive about that. Didn't check into it, didn't opt to try and rush the Baron. Instead, obviously, it goes down very fast. I'm missing a lot of key summoner spells here. Swaith might be caught out, or is yeah. Balkan? Yeah, Balkan walks away from it, though. He did have Ragnarok if he had to. Yep, has the Adaptive Helm now, so not taking all that much damage. And what I meant is, you know, no flash on shock that's about to become available. No flash on gun crap, I'm pretty sure, at that stage as well. So Bad timing to try and yeah, force a fight. Instead of, you know, fighting for a dragon that might cost you the game, why not just go back towards it? Now it's just one in, uh, Infernal to the other. Ryoma now going to face check a team. Ooh, okay. So they decide to go for the redemption to try and face check that one. That means the game is going to be up. So Avant, after giving a token effort, back away from the Baron. Yeah, Mimic caught in the bottom lane without any teleport. Has exhaust instead, and they know he would have to burn the exhaust on someone to be able to carry back over. No one in the lane to be able to burn exhaust on. So that's something Avant have done very well, though. Having after having lost a lot of towers in side lanes, they've managed to force bombers to not necessarily put a whole lot of focus on either of the sides. They cleared waves very well. Yep. Uh, and that means that bombers can't really push that advantage they got. Yeah, absolutely. Is now. Oh boy, here comes Rioma, and they've caught two. Instantly chewing up Gun Crab, and it looks like. Chippies is soon to follow. It doesn't matter how big that Scion is. He is in to five members. Bombers get a double kill for Mimic. And now they look for the return play here. Not enough damage. So it's, it's going to be mid lane. Or well, maybe not. They've got no minions just yet. It's still 40 seconds until the top laner is back up and available. So I assume they'll be able to go for this here. Swaith is here. 
but he's keeping a healthy distance. This should be enough to break the base here in the mid side. That is a lot of damage, and the turret just gets completely cut through. That's going to be an easy inhibitor. Yeah, it certainly is, and really well played from the Bombers there. You know, we said that Avant looking like they were coming back into this game. Top lane turret already gone from about minute 15. So this is going to be double inhibitor taken, Pyra. Yeah, all of a sudden that's going to be pretty good Baron chances for Bombers to set up. In fact, they might just make a dash for it at this point. Chippies is still six seconds away. No, they're going to back away in the safety of that brush over by Red Pit. And I think potentially, you know, Avant make the dash for it because they've got teleport available. They stopped backs, though. They might have stopped some of the backs, yeah. They might want to take this fight. That might be the chance to get back into this one. However, Swaith didn't move away for one second. There's going to be the Glacial Prison. Knock up. Goes golden. They do get Mimic on the back of it, but that's another flash burned. Let's see. He's going to get out. Ooh, Once again, main knockout. train coming, but he stops short just on the wall there looking for Mimic. Not enough damage to find it. The fight is still on, but do Avant have the damage to take it here? Gun Crab on the front. Full channel calling. Hook onto the Scion. That's going to be a back away from Ryoma. They clearly don't want this fight, but Avant can't force the issue. There's super minions streaming into two lanes. Yeah, and now teleport available for Ryoma. As you mentioned, wave's so big right now. Avant must respond. This could be the Baron picked up, or if a member dies, they could just look to end. Elidar in trouble. That's going to be another hook and a play back in. So all of a sudden, Avant tagged their way back forward again. Rogue taken very low, but he doesn't get taken down. Ryoma, Mimic into the back line, and they're cutting through the members of Avant. This looks like it is going to be the fight that Bombers needed. It looks for just a second they may not have it. Mimic here Ooh. does get chunked pretty low. Still going a little indecisive here. Shippy's going to fall down into the zombie form he goes. And Shock is limping away as one of the last members remaining for his team. Balkan still chasing him down. And that was such a close team fight. Look at the health bars out of the Avant lineup, but they lose it in the end. Still four members up, and it's only Shock. One Nexus turret remaining. Can he defend? He can't even get a full heal out here, and he has to still dodge axes. The rest of the team is coming up here. Shock, if he could pull that off, it'd be an absolute miracle, but he doesn't have an ultimate available to himself. And Bombers taking this methodical. Alidor comes up, but that's not the one you want to try and stop Bombers from ending this game. There goes the knockup. There goes everything. But there goes the Nexus spawn. Bombers are going to be able to do this one and polish off Avant. It was a good effort from Avant, 35 minutes, but in the end, just in the little categories, Bombers were able to eke advantages, but certainly a close game. And you know, now that's Avant pushing Bombers, as Chief, uh, Bombers, Chiefs beating Bombers last week, shows how close this top three are. There is a lot of parity here in the top level of the OPL for sure. And that, that game is just proof that, that nothing is really over until it is. A couple of catches that may have ended games just didn't happen. It was really on to, you know, the second time, the third time, the fourth time. Finally, it's enough to overwhelm. And Avant, they had chances to really close this game, to, to put it in their favor. But it just, it, it, the execution just wasn't quite enough. Honestly, there were so many 50-50 plays. And, you know, people would look back and say that was a mistake from Avant. That was a mistake. I think Avant made only one error that I could, like, really blatantly see this game. And it was a bottom lane turret dive. You take that, you know, three turret push and three kills for one in the bottom lane out of this game, and they probably have the extra 150 damage per member to be able to win that last team fight. Uh, I think that it shows such resilience for a young lineup against the Bombers to lose a fight that disastrously and still stay in this game, still get advantages in saying that Bombers one of those teams that once FBI gets rolling, you know, Ryoma and Mimic just are very brazen in how they start team fights. Yeah. And it draws so much attention and just allows their AD carry to be able to sit back. And then you've got great utility players in Balkan and Rogue. Certainly a team that I really enjoy watch play because they play kind of linear League of Legends, to be honest, but they just execute on it so well and, you know, so consistently. Yeah, and they, they do it they, they do it very aggressively as well. They're oh, always yeah. sniffing for those plays, and that it's what makes those 50-50s feel like 60-40s, and that's why they seem to edge it out. As I said, they're a brazen team. They literally just walk at you. Yeah. They're like, you know what? If you come into this part of the river, like, we're going to fight you, and, like, good luck to you because we think we're better at it. And they've shown a couple of times that they are, and against the Chiefs, it really did punish them. So, I, I mean, it's, it's a bold way to play the game, but it doesn't always work. All right, four to five ain't bad. Though I want to know what the couch has to say about that one. I want to know what the couch has to say as well. Let's cut to the couch. What do you have to say, couch? Hell yeah, we are the couch. And uh, that was a pretty interesting game. Uh, you know, it was fairly close for like a lot of it. Jake kind of hit on it on the desk just then. Like a lot of those fights were 50-50. I feel like there was a bunch of cool plays I liked. Like that was a very good 
Eve game to watch just in general in terms of like play style differences. Like Swaith is a very good Evelyn player and he found opportunities like that one on Rogue when he's like picking him in the mid lane, flanking behind. Those things are really good to see. Bolkan stopping a Scion ulti with his Olaf ulti, stuff like that. I feel like this game is interesting in terms of what it means for the top of the ladder. AV mm -hmm. has had their upset win mm -hmm. and now like they've lost to Chiefs, they've lost to Bombers who I feel like are cementing themselves as the top two dogs. So Bombers, this was a fairly close game from them, but but it means a lot in discerning like the rankings on the ladder and like are there gaps between all the different teams. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, from this game, you'd still be fairly happy as AV. You've got some mm. good things to take away from it. You know you can keep up with this it's falling out of my ear. It's gone. You've got some good <laughs> things you can take away from it as well, uh, especially going into tomorrow, going into the next weeks. So there's a lot of good information there. And for me, like I want to bring it back to the draft as well because Spawn mentioned this during the champ select. There are some things that stood out to me as well, like... Weird drafting orders, I would say, not going for like a strong early game and then suffering a little bit in those moments where like the recovery was amazing, but it was the start of the game that felt like a, a big thing that if they show that up, suddenly maybe the game doesn't go that way. Because it's also like Eve gets to start 2-0, right? This was like an Olaf and then Eve was picked into that, like knowing full well, like Eve Olaf... Picked fourth, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. believe so. I have the draft. Olaf was into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, no, you're absolutely yeah. correct. But like Eve starts that game 2-0, which is really good and I don't think should happen. Right, like this is this is somewhere where like Liss and Olaf should be able to run over a Syndra. We've seen that in the Order Gravitas game. I feel like that should be a very hard matchup to play mm -hmm. when you have an Eve in your back pocket. Um, and then she starts the game 2-0, and like they still don't get like too much done with it. So it it is interesting. It's been a rough day for the top half of the ladder with Mammoth and uh, AV both dropping games. Uh, by the way, on the way in here, uh, I ran into Rogue. Uh, and he's just running into players all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's, fix such, that. it's such a social location. Uh, and he said, uh, he was like, oh, I haven't seen you in ages. And I went, yeah. And he said, says something nice about me. Um, and so we're going to cut to commercial. It pledged that never shall someone become his friend. It pledged that he shall be alone until his end. Sorrow and despair became too much to bear. Tantrum that he never could control. 